Tommy Hartman. Um, Skogie is a really good leader. Um, he's a really good tackler. And I met him my junior year, and I said, you moved from Washington, and he said yes. And one day, I remember when his favorite team, the Seahawks, lose, I'd say, Skogie, the Seahawks are not that good. Whoa. Hi, I'm Skoglin. You can't really say anything negative about Skogan. I mean, he's he's such a nice guy. He has some really nice, beautiful thighs, too. And his eyes, whoo, you could get lost in those. <laughs> yeah. So when I think of Austin Skoglund, um, have you ever been to the rodeo? And you kind of go, you know, they bring the bulls out and they walk them through the chutes. And then they put them in the, the buck and chute and the chute's real small and the bull's real big. And so they've got them caged in there and then Cowboy gets on the bull and the bull starts shaking and the cowboy gets a little worried. Well, Austin's kind of like that bull. We just cage him up all week and then on Friday night we let him loose um, and he goes out and wreaks havoc all over the field, knocks people down, right, runs through and plays 100% everything he's got, every play. And not only that, he's, he's very intelligent, like he cares about the game. He's a student of the game. He wants to know why he's doing something, what he's doing. and then. Every day he is meticulous with all-out effort, and he just had an amazing year. So when I think of Austin, one play would be San Antonio Roosevelt. We're playing um, second-round playoff game. It is the fourth quarter. We are winning 14-7. to seven. It's fourth down to, and three. They have a little momentum, and we send Austin on this, what we call a stab, and basically he runs off the edge and runs through the pulling guard, knocks him down, dives around him, grabs the running back's ankle, slows him down just enough for everyone to catch up and us to stone that running back for no yards. And uh, after the play was over, he kind of, you know, fist pumps the air and then like Peacock struts off the field. And it was just an amazing, amazing way to win a game, amazing way to win a playoff game. And uh, he made tons of plays like that. But Austin, I look forward to keeping up with you in your career and just thank you for everything you did for our football team and how committed you were. Thank you. Hunter Ross is a really good leader, a really good athlete, and he's, he, he plays like an animal on the field all the time. And I tell him, oh wow, you're playing like an animal, because you're like running people down all over the field. And one funny thing I'm saying to Hunter, Hunter, are you eating junk food every day? <laughs> My name is Hunter Ross. I really like to eat. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Hunter, you're a great player, really tough, but I'm so surprised you haven't overdosed an Advil yet. <laughs> My shoulder, knee, hamstring, hip flexor, back, head, they hurt. Can I sit out the rest of the week? So when I think of Hunter, I think of like an i9 computer processor, like at the absolute fastest thinker I've ever seen in my life. He could, he could basically take 40 checks on Monday morning. He could look at the piece of paper for like five minutes and then two hours later in practice, he would know every single thing on that piece of paper. He could tell everyone what to do, why they were doing it, how they were doing it. And he made practice, Monday morning practice, look like a Friday game prep. And so when you have a guy like that, it makes things easy because everyone just follows his lead. Um, Hunter's a four-year guy. He waited his time. He worked his butt off. He's committed. And he had a lot of good games, but one game that really stands out is the San Antonio Brennan game. Comes into that game, um, they have a really big offensive line that we're, we're pretty worried about and then, mo then moving us up front. Um, first play of the game, he steps to his gap, tackle releases on him, he button extends the tackle, knocks his head back, then crosses face, stones the running back in the C gap, knocks him back, and from that play, we just crush the rest of that game following his lead. So, um, Hunter, I want to thank you so much for your time and commitment to Vandegrift football. It was a lot of effort from you. Thank you for this great year and enjoyed your senior season. I look forward to keeping up with you. Uh, Michael Mastro de Costa is a really good leader and a really good player, even though he didn't play the fourth round, which makes me pissed and I'm like, one day, uh, he had a pick six against Austin High, and I was going crazy and I was saying, yes, sir, Mastro, yes, sir. 
And obviously he committed to Baylor. Sick him. Because he, I'm so excited for him to go to Baylor. Obviously I'm going to miss him. He's a really good leader. And sick of Bears. Yeah. Hi, my name is Michael Master DeCosson. I'm a DB with linebacker hands. Do it yourself. Do it yourself. Do it yourself. Do it yourself. Who's got it? Hey, Jesse. How many Super Bowl losses do you have? Three. Three. How many Super Bowl losses do the Bills have again? What, four? Five? No, four. All right. What's up, Mastro? This, uh, this is a shout out to Michael Master DeCosson, number 22. Uh, man. I don't know how much time I got today, but I do want to recognize Master. I think I'm going to use all my time. Uh, couldn't admire a young man more. Um, the word that comes to my mind is champion because I think he is um, a true champion in every sense of the word. Um, he fought his way through a junior year that I know that uh, bugged him, and he didn't, in his mind, didn't reach the potential of what he wanted to do. Um, but. Um, he still stuck with it. He still kept grinding. And then, of course, came back his senior year. And, and if you're watching this video, you saw him make play after play for our defense this year. Um, came into a new position, learned everything new about it, and uh, just really dominated the entire year. And in addition to just worked and, and grinded uh, and, and uh, was a positive leader. Um, tons of plays made, lots of favorite plays, but I think my favorite play was the interception against Austin High to clinch that first round win. They were very, very good, and all we needed was one play, one play to separate, and Mastro did that with a really nice kind of trick the UT commit. Um, went one way and then all of a sudden ran the other way and jumped right in front of uh, one of his passes, and, and so that was really fun thinking of that memory. Mastro, I'm proud of you. Um, love you. I'm excited to see what you're going to do at Baylor playing some football. I can see you running down and making plays there too. So uh, best of luck to you, bud. <laughs> uh, Charlie Fournier, obviously, he's probably the best kicker in Vandergriff history. I remember, like, Wes, what did we say? Geronimo! And, like, Fournier just kicks it, and like every time during spring ball, we do the thing called Geronimo and say, go make that, Charlie. Hey, Charlie, kickers are people too. No. First thing I think about when I think about Charlie is he was not going to be denied to be great this year. When we were sort of quarantined or whatever it was in the spring and summer, you know, Charlie never stopped working. Um, he, he was so dedicated and so disciplined and I guess he's really been that way, I think, throughout his career. And that, that, that's what led to him being so good. Not only did he work on his game, but he got teammates uh, to work on their game and, and help us get ready for the season. And, of course, the results speak for themselves. Charlie had a great year for us. He was an absolute, I want to say secret weapon, but it really wasn't much of a secret. He was a major weapon for us. One of my most fun things to do was to turn on the broadcast of the game or the live stream the day after the game and listen to the announcer just grave on and on about Charlie, about how good he was and all the things he could do. That was so much fun. And, and hopefully he had fun doing that too. I think he did. But, you know, he, he, he had some memorable moments. The Geronimo kick against Westwood was one. Then, of course, the 49-yard school record field goal against Hutto, which was amazing. All his touchbacks on kickoffs. I think most, most of all was probably the field goal against Brennan, not the longest field goal, but a lot of pressure after having one block to come back and make it to seal the victory. Also outstanding. But more than any of that, Charlie truly is a football player, not just a kicker. And he was able to put that on display against Ellison when he made a bone crushing tackle. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but definitely a great tackle uh, on a kickoff. Hey, great job, Charlie. Love coaching you. Thanks for all your contributions. Can't wait to see you have great success at Southwestern. Uh, Chase Runyon, obviously he's a good leader, um, a good encourager, and he's going to do great things being a, a church speaker. Um, obviously, I went to Pine Cove with him since my uh, freshman year, and he does a good job um, leading by example. And obviously, he's going to do great things in college. And I'm really going to miss him a lot. And he's a really good athlete and works so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Your 
your hair looks like the hair of Patrick Mahomes, but your personality is like Jackson Mahomes. When I think of Chase Runyon, he's the kind of guy that likes to push the limits. Um, he really likes to push the limits on how late he can set his alarm and still get to morning meetings on time. But he always gets there on time, usually right as the, the door kind of closes behind him. Um, then sometimes he'd come in and we'd be going through these long morning meetings and um, he kind of maybe takes a little cat nap. And uh, so I'd, I'd wait for him to kind of do that and I'd ask him a question I thought was complicated and he would answer just like that and get it right every time. So obviously a very intelligent kid. And then he also sometimes will push the limit in a playoff game when we're playing maybe a quarterback that's committed to UT and we're doing the COVID wave and he might have did something that that quarterback didn't like that much, but uh, that, that was pretty awesome. Um, Chase is a great young man. He works extremely hard. He cares about his teammates and he's just really fun to coach. He's gonna have a great career as he moves on. So Chase, I thank you for your time and commitment to Vandergriff football. Um, I look forward to keeping track, track of you. Uh, Dimitri Muto, I've known him since my freshman year. Um, obviously, he didn't play sophomore year, but um, he um, he was injured most of his senior year, which kind of stinked. Um, but he was the best kicker in Pop Warner, and obviously, he's going to do great things playing soccer in college in the future. And he's a really good soccer player, so we're probably going to miss him a lot. You are four six, and I've never seen Coach Hermes get so mad at a kicker in a JV game. All right, Mudo, I'm confused if you're a ball boy, a player, or a manager. Because you dress out, but I never see you come to practice like maybe five minutes a day, and then you're out. Like, what? I'm confused, Mudo. Like, are you soccer or football? You know, unfortunately, Dimitri was not able to play this year due to his injury. And I know that was a disappointment. Uh, when, you know, he first told me about it, I, I really didn't expect him to do much football related. I knew it was a serious injury, and it, and it sounded like he was not going to be able to be out there much with us. But I'll tell you, Dimitri was out there, and he was a huge and important part of our program, of our special teams, of our kicking group. Loved having him out there. He really deserves some special recognition because he didn't have to be out there. Uh, he wasn't in the class period. He, he you know, wasn't like he played another position as well. Um, but he was, and he, and he did it with a great attitude. He helped out with whatever was needed. He helped the coaches. But I think really mostly he helped his teammates just being there, working with them. Um, doing whatever was needed to contribute and, and found a way to contribute. Something we talk about all the time with our guys, finding a way. Dimitri did that. I'm so glad that he experienced this great season with us and, and, and I was able to experience with him. Really grateful for that opportunity. And it was fun to see him finally suit up at the end of the year, um, you know, even though he didn't get a chance to play. So, Dimitri, uh, great job. Thanks so much, man. Really appreciate it. Uh, Kepama, obviously, he's a great role model, great leader, and obviously, he was in YMSL with me, and he did, he was, he's good at serving the community like me um, with YMSL, and obviously, he was a great role model in YMSL and in football, great encourager in the weight room, and obviously, he's going to do great things in college in the future. Loggy, loggy, loggy! Kepama trying to catch a ball. Go for my hand. <laughs> so when I think of Jordan, I think of the word present and not like, pre like mentally and physically present. He was always where he was supposed to be. And it's really hard nowadays to find kids that do that because they're always thinking about what am I going to do next year? What am I going to do for lunch? What am I going to do tomorrow? Are we going on vacation? What am I going to do after school? But Jordan was always where he was supposed to be mentally and physically for meetings, for practice. He was always there. He knew what he was doing, why he was doing it, um, how he was going to do it. And that's just a, a great quality to find. And sometimes, you know, he may not even have started that game, but you know, he had a special teams role. He did everything he was supposed to do every single day. And it came, you know, perfect. One game I can think of, Cedar Ridge game, huge district game, and our starting Sam goes out and we put Jordan in and we did not miss a beat, which is really difficult to do because a lot of times when you lose a starter, 
you know, you've got to slim your playbook down or change your calls a little bit. But with Jordan, we put him in, and everything we have worked throughout the year, it didn't matter if it was five weeks ago or a week ago or, you know, two months ago, he knew what to do. He did it really well. He got everyone lined up. He took charge of that game, and he was a huge part to that big district victory. So, Jordan, I want to thank you so much for all your time and effort and your commitment to Vandergriff football. Look forward to keeping up with you. Uh, Dom Gina BC, obviously a great role model and a great athlete. And um, obviously, he's going to do great things in college. Um, and I have a funny thing to say. Tom, we'll have it to the Lions. And I said, Dom, we'll have it to the Browns. Dom, I just want to let you know that the Ravens are 2 0 against the Browns this year. Go Browns. You need someone to race to practice. Dom was the guy. Most improved player I've ever coached from freshman year to senior year. Dom wasn't the biggest, he wasn't the fastest, but he might have been the meanest. He used the things that made him angry during the day and released that in the, in the weight room and on the field daily. He used football as a tool to make him a better person to others, and I think that's awesome. <clears throat> he never griped about practice, the team he was on, or the role that he played on the team. He trusted us to do what was in his best interest, and for that I want to say thank you. I'm going to miss you, and I still look forward to the hookups that I'm going to get at Lake Travis Pizza. Uh, Clayton Coulter, obviously, um, not a great role model, but <laughs> <laughs> he's obviously, he's always runs late, um, obviously, it's kind of funny. Uh, Clayton Coulter, obviously, uh, a great encourager, he works hard at practice, um, does what he's supposed to do, and obviously, he was my teammate in Pop Warner my fourth grade year, and he's going to do great things at Texas State, eating cats. Yeah. <laughs> Alright Coulter, you made VHS parking twice. <laughs> and, uh, there's another one too. There you go. <laughs> All right. Number 51, Clayton Coulter. Uh, he's a great team player, uh, emerged in his role definitely seen his senior year. And uh, he best represents one of our hallmarks as disciplined, as he understood his role. Uh, whether he didn't want to wake up or whatever, he still showed up every single day, encouraged his teammates, and uh, was up here and did everything we asked. And that's what it takes uh, to have kids like that to have a winning and successful program. And we're extremely proud of him for doing that. A uh, funny story about him was basically he was not a very loud kid. He was pretty quiet and reserved most of the time. But uh, whenever it came to during our games and getting Crunt Nation, as we call it, he was one of the best when it came to this. Uh, he would be jumping up and down, getting everybody going, and it was just really surprising for me to see that because he was such a quiet and reserved kid. So that always made me laugh, and uh, it was always great to see. He's got a bright future ahead of him. He's a super bright kid, and uh, we're excited to see what he does. Uh, Dion obviously is a great moral model. Um, obviously, he um, injured his ACL two years, like his sophomore and junior year. Busted uh, ACLs a lot and meniscuses. Um, and I have a funny thing to say. Uh, Tommy, the Lions stink. <laughs> Dion, you have the needs of Stephen Hawking. Oh. Dion, you never knew how well you could play on varsity because your ACLs were softer than Lamar Jackson. He was an unbelievable team player and really faced adversity like no other, uh, especially in this program. I know it's tough what happened to him. He had an injury during his sophomore year uh, that was a season ending. Uh, he came back his junior year and played on the JV Black, did a great job and was ready for his senior year. Absolutely worked his tail off during the offseason and then got another season ending injury during our first scrimmage. And I could see how heartbroken he was and I was also heartbroken for him as good as the relationship we had. And uh, it was extremely devastating to see, especially as a coach. And, um, but he still showed up every single day. Uh, he was really representing one of our best hallmarks, his toughness, uh, and being mentally tough and still being able to fight through that adversity. 
Uh, he could have easily just quit, but he still came up here every day, encouraged his teammates, uh, did exactly what we asked him to do, and uh, we're extremely proud of him for that. Uh, a funny story about him was he was usually the music guy in the weight room. He knew I didn't really like rap music that much, but uh, every now and then I'd hear a song that was a little, you know, fire, and uh, I would ask him, hey, Dehan, what's the name of this song? I kind of like it, and he would get all riled up and get everybody going, and uh, because he knew I didn't really like rap music that much, but... Uh, uh, that always made me laugh, and it was funny to see. But uh, either way, he's an extremely smart kid, one of the smartest in his class, and he's going to have an awesome future ahead of him, uh, not only by his academics, but his mental toughness. Uh, Jake Bowman, he's a great role model, great leader. Um, obviously, um, he missed uh, most of the season with a broken wrist one year. Jake is going to do great things, uh, trying to coach up the Dallas Cowboys, his favorite NFL team, and help Taylor become a Cowboys dancer. Uh, Jake, you missed the one game that you had a chance of getting a varsity start for. So Jake Bowman's one of those real laid-back kids that's always got a, like a dry, funny comment right when you need it, kind of when you need someone to break the ice or when things are getting real tense and he's got something real funny to say. Um, very, very enjoyable to be around, to be around. Very hard worker. Comes to practice every day. He's on time. He goes to work. And Jake had a career where he had several major injuries that kind of lasted, and he couldn't quite get over them. But he never. You could never tell. He would never tell you um, how he felt. He just would go out there and work as hard as he could every day. So you know, with that going on, and without him telling you how he felt, he's an extremely tough kid. Also, so you've got. You've got Jake that's funny, he's smart, he's tough, he's extremely fun to coach, he worked hard, and he had a great career at Vandegrift High School. Jake, I look forward to keeping up with you and watching as you continue on to college. Thanks. Uh, Kyle Morris, such a good role model, obviously a strong athlete. Um, sometimes I call him Country Kyle, which is kind of funny, because Country Kyle likes to wear cowboy hats when we go on road trips for playoffs. And I said, Kyle, hey, nice hat, Kyle. And that's what you like to be. He's probably going to be a country senior in the future, kind of like Joseph Hawk. And he's going to do great things becoming a country senior. Oh, uh, hey, Kyle. How's it going? Hattie. Number 55, Kyle Morris. Uh, we also refer to him as Country Kyle due to his accent and usually the way he dressed. He'd show up in boots and a cowboy hat every day. Uh, listen to what we would think might be country music, uh, but maybe not in some of our eyes. Um, either way, uh, Kyle was a great leader on our team. He really emerged as a leader during his senior year offseason before we got quarantined. Uh, he showed up every single day, did exactly what we asked. He's an extremely tough kid. Uh, super hard worker, never missed a workout and was really a great leader by example to all of his teammates. Uh, was really proud to see him emerge as a leader in his, in his role, and he's going to do really great things. Uh, a funny story about Kyle was during one of our quarantine periods uh, later in the season, he actually did his quarantine Zoom from his deer stand. And actually, you can see him in camouflage, uh, in his hat, in the deer stand, all, uh, all nice and cozy with a cup of coffee next to him. Uh, and I would say, Kyle, are you there? And he wouldn't say anything back, but he would put in the chat basically that he was there and he had to be quiet because he didn't want to scare the deer in front of him. And he would sometimes kind of show us the deer in front of him. So uh, he was listening through his headphones, but that was always a funny thing to see. Uh, and he's going to do great things in whatever he does uh, with his hardworking mindset. Uh, Seth Sable, great role model. Great uh, encourager in the white room and being good on Kronk Nation this year. Um, he's going to do great things in the future. Um, and I'm obviously going to miss him. And, and I like the hats that he wears sometimes every day. I'm surprised he showed up. <laughs> um, Coach Sabo this year was a joy. He was able to overcome some personal adversity, but channeled those emotions and was able to complete this football season. Although I'm sure he didn't get to play as much as he wanted, he still served a vital role in the football team. Every day at practice, he came out and helped his teammates get ready. Being one of the more athletic defensive linemen, he would oftentimes serve as the opposing team's quarterback and helping us prepare. I don't know if he understood how much that helped the team, 
but it helped a ton. I just want to say thanks, Sabo, for your contributions as a Vanagriff Viper. Uh, Wes Gentry is a great encourager, role model, and obviously um, he's a really good player. Um, he does really works hard at practice every day, works hard in the weight room every day, and sometimes he helps her sister Brooke become a Texas Aggie at Texas A&M in the future. Dig him for Brooke, your sister Wes, and obviously Wes is going to do great things in college. Imagine letting a sophomore take your spot. Come on, bro. Kinley told me to make a sister joke, but uh, I thought that was inappropriate. Um, I, I, I liked your car, and you're a really great guy. There you go, Wes Gentry, number 60. I'm a huge fan of Wes Gentry. He's one of the hardest working guys in the program. From what I know, he worked himself up from a freshman white team player to a varsity contributor, and that's hard, that hardly ever happens. This is a testament to how hard he works. One of my fondest mem memories or moments of Wes was workouts before the season started watching him constantly give all that he had running hoops. Kids just competed, and that gained my respect early on. I know West didn't get to contributing games as much as he wanted, but he stuck with it. The lessons you learned on the field, you will be able to take it into the real world, and they will help you become a success. Thanks, Wes, for your contribution as a Vandy Griff Viper. Um, Saggy's a great leader. Obviously, he's work, he works so hard in the classroom. Obviously, he's going to do great things in college. Um, he's a really good hard worker, and obviously, um, he wants to become a dentist like his mom is. And my mom is my, his mom is my dentist. And Saggy, I think um, you're going to be a great role model in college. My name is Rasal Saggy. I like to eat. <laughs> Imagine starting the season 11-0 and then losing to the Browns twice to finish it. When I think of Saggy, I think of pure joy and one of the happiest players I've ever coached. At one of his home visits, his parents revealed that he was contemplating quitting the team and they would support whatever decisions he made. After a short conversation, he assured me that he was committed to playing football all four years and he's seen it through. As one of the smartest players I've ever coached, he knew all of the defensive calls and was a source of information for any D lineman that needed help on a daily basis. Thanks for being a great teammate, a great player, the best DC assistant holding our practice plan every day we have ever had, and just an overall ball of joy for our unit. I'm going to miss you. Sege! Uh, Rinkovich is a great leader, um, great uh, role model, uh, hard working in the weight room. And um, one day, like um, me and Ethan were driving and said, Rink, why are you driving so bad? <laughs> What's more useless in this world, a pet rock or Rink's turn signals? <laughs> All state sway leader. The Saints have lost in the playoffs in the past four years, and for, the, for, for three of those years, you were fatter than me. Uh, Rink is one of the funniest guys on the team, in my opinion. He always kept the team going at practice. Sometimes he would um, tell a joke to lighten the mood, and other times he would help guys out with their assignments uh, on certain plays. My favorite part of coaching Rink um, was observing him every game leading to Kronk Nation before every kickoff. He tried to contribute as much as he could to the win. To me, little things like this makes a kid special. I know Rink will take that same attitude that is displayed on the field and become a major success in life um, and whatever he chooses to pursue in the future. I just want to say thanks, Rink, for your, for your contributions as a Vandegrift Viper. Ricky, I think you're the best D lineman in Vandegrift history because you always sack a lot of quarterbacks, like eat them up, and um, obviously you're probably the best D lineman in Vandergriff history, Ricky. You're going to do great things at UMHB. Saggy was on Flex ATX just as much as you were. I love how Tommy said you were the best D lineman in Vandergriff history, but this year you had less sacks than your own teammate, Tucker. One of the most gifted pass rushers I've ever coached. 
Ricky Sweeney started off as a nose tackle in his first two seasons here at Vandergrift. But because of his speed, quickness, and pass rush abilities, we decided to move him to defensive end. As a junior, he played a key role for us on third downs at the varsity level as a, as a reserve player. When the pandemic hit, Ricky took the time to improve his game all around. He gained the weight we asked him to gain. He refined his pass rushing skills even more, and he improved his run stopping ability as well. Because of his hard work and dedication over the off season and his play this year, he became the District 25-6A Defense Alignment of the Year. I'm so proud of you, and the future is so bright for you. I'm going to miss you, man.